With the trade deadline coming up, a lot of Ravens fans been wondering what type of player the Baltimore Ravens should acquire. There have been some people that saying, hey, we need to get a wide receiver, a true X jump ball, big body wide receiver to help complement our guys and help out Lamar Jackson even more and help elevate this offense and take them to even higher heights than they already been getting. Then there's other people that have been saying, no, 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 we don't need no help on the offensive side of the ball. We need to invest even more into this defense. We need to get another cornerback. They've been saying we need help in the secondary. There's been other people saying, not necessarily cornerback, but we need to make some big improvements to our safety play. We need to go get us a new safety. And then there's been other people saying, well, no, no the secondary, they're cool, but what's really going to help the secondary out is if we get a pass rusher, an edge guy to really help put pressure on those quarterbacks because we just simply have not been able to get pressure on anybody recently or consistently. It's been bad. And I get every single argument that Ravens fans have been making. I'm with you on all of it. I, if we could get everything, then I would certainly be more than willing to do that. But a lot of Ravens fans feel like it can only be one this is where I have to push back. Because today, it wasn't no groundbreaking move, it wasn't no earth-shattering move that the Kansas City Chiefs made, but today, in my opinion, the Kansas City Chiefs, they sent a message. Now, they were not sending a message to the Baltimore Ravens, but I believe the Baltimore Ravens should take it as a message and take it as a wake-up call and be like, hold up, it doesn't have to be just one. We we could make trades for actual, actually two players or possibly more. Hey, Ravens, if you want to go crazy, go, no problem. But it doesn't just have to be one. And I think a lot of Ravens fans get caught up with the way that the Baltimore Ravens have done things because the Baltimore Ravens, the way that they condition you is to believe that, especially when it comes to free agency, when it comes to trades, when it comes to stuff like that, roster movement and personnel, that you can only do so much. And technically you can, but... It's all about what you're willing to do. And see, with the Baltimore Ravens, when it's come to the trade deadline, they, they usually make a move. But this year, especially after last year, you, you were so close and you lost a lot. You lost a whole lot. But, hey, you're sitting at 5-3 and three overall, and that's pretty good, uh, especially with everything that you lost, and especially the way your defense has been playing. To be 5-3, and three, whew, I mean, if we looked at the defensive numbers, because right now, uh, the Ravens are last in pass defense. The Ravens are last in pass touchdowns given up. And the Ravens are last in 15 air yard completion. So when the, the ball goes 15 or more yards, they're last in giving those up. So that pass defense is rough. But if you would have told me that they would be last in all of that stuff and be sitting at 5-3 and three right now, I'd be like, oh, wow, that's... That offense must be outstanding. They must be just outscoring everybody. And, yeah, that's what they've had to do. But anyway, um, the Chiefs. They are not five and th the Chiefs are undefeated. They have not lost a single game this year. Not a single one. Now, there's been some little funny business going on here, but the Chiefs, bottom line, they have not lost a single game this year. But when I say the Baltimore Ravens really got to take this as a message from the Chiefs, you look at what they're doing and look at what they've been willing to do. Despite not having lost a game, they're still like, you know what? We got some issues at wide receiver. We got some problems there. Even though they haven't lost a game. And some people could look at it like, uh, are the issues really that big if they haven't lost a game because of them? Because we're still undefeated. They could look at it like that. But the Chiefs are like, nope, we're, we're not good enough. We're not good enough. The Chiefs are like, you know what? We got a Chris Jones. We got a George Karloftis, our pass rush. <gasps> you know what? Let's try to make them just a little bit better. A little bit. So we're going to trade for a former Michigan edge rusher, second round pick, who was a healthy scratch in yesterday's games. Oh my goodness, that sounds like a Baltimore Raven, but it wasn't. It was Josh Uche. So they traded for him today. Um, and again, like I said, it, it, it was not no groundbreaking, earth shattering move that the Chiefs made with that, but just last week, they traded for DeAndre Hopkins. So the Chiefs have been very active on the trade market despite being a team that has not lost a single game despite being a team that when you look oh what team won the super bowl last year couldn't be the chiefs not with all the moves that they making yes it was the kansas city chiefs what team has won three super bowls over the past couple years oh it's, it's the 
can't be the Kansas City Chiefs. No, no, it's the Kansas City Chiefs. When you ask anybody, what team has the best head coach in the league? Who, who, who would they say? Nine times out of ten, if they're being honest, <laughs> nine times out of ten, people say Andy Reid. And his success speaks for itself. It really does. And with Andy Reid, we see that the Chiefs, they do a good job of getting the most out of a lot of their players. I mean, you look at their offense. You look at their wide receivers right now. I look at their wide receivers from even last year. But what right now, you think, oh, even before DeAndre Hopkins, like, they solid. It's like Xavier Worthy, he's been doing his thing. Rasheed Rice is out. Hollywood is out. What they got? McCole Harbin? Um, so you think, oh, okay, well, ain't nothing too crazy there. But the Chiefs, like, they, they still been winning. You look at that defense. Now they do got Chris Jones. They got George Kalabdi. They got Trent McDuffie. Bolton. We'll, Bolton is a baller, man. That boy can play. But anyway, their defense overall, they got some, some really good players here and there. But overall, it's like, oh, that's it. But their defense be balling. So Andy Reid, he be doing this thing. I know they got, um, who is it, Steve Spagnuolo as their defensive coordinator, I believe. But he be doing this thing as well. So the Chiefs, their coaching staff, they do such a great job of getting the most out of their players. You could think, hey, the Chiefs, their coaching staff, they're already getting the most out of their personnel. They're good. But the Chiefs said, no, that's not enough. That's the message that I want the Baltimore Ravens to get, that it's not enough. What we have now is not enough and we can always look for ways to get better. Now, I know you can't make every single trade in the world. You cannot get every single player. And I get it that there also has to be balance too because you're not gonna give a first round pick for this player and another first round pick from the following year for another player like that. You're not gonna do that, I get that. But find ways to make your team better. Address it, please, because the Super Bowl window is not necessarily closing, but you done missed out on some real good chances. Real good chances. Now, it, all, it hasn't all been due to roster because the way that these balls are 2019 and 2023, those were some of the Baltimore Ravens' biggest chances. And what did they do? No, you already know what they did. Um, and that was more coaching than anything. But um, if you see an opportunity to get even stronger as a team, you do it. You take that opportunity. If the Ravens weren't about getting even stronger as a team, what would Derrick Henry even be doing here? Why would he even be a Baltimore Raven? Ravens already knew how to run the ball. But they said, no, 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 no. Let's go get somebody, a Hall of Famer, at the running back position, at a position where we are very strong at, where we know how to run the ball. We've been doing it for years. That's been our thing. But let's go get a Hall of Famer to make us even better. So, I need the Baltimore, we need the Baltimore Ravens. They need to have that mindset to where we can get even better. Now, I know as Ravens fans, after that loss to the Browns, we've been going through it. But if you look good while you're going through it, maybe it'll help you feel good or even gooder. And gooder just so happens to be the sponsor of this video. With gooder, you can find sunnies like these or these or even these starting at just $25 a pair. They're both lightweight and comfortable. There's no slip and no bounce. And they're designed for more chill stuff like everyday wear. Or if you want to get more active with them, you want to go running or go on hikes, they're good for everything. And since they're so affordable, you don't have to worry about breaking them or losing them or anything like that you can just get a pair for every occasion so if you need a new pair of sunnies gooder is giving team keep it clean listeners free shipping so you can go to gooder.com slash engraven use code engraven for free shipping gooder offers a 30-day money-back guarantee and 100 satisfaction again that's gooder.com slash engraven and gooder is spelled g-o-o-d-r dot com slash engraven use code engraven for free shipping so as we draw closer to that trade deadline We'll see exactly what EDC and the Baltimore Ravens got up their sleeve. We are all looking forward to it. Now, uh, we have reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. And boy, oh boy, like I always say, after the Ravens win, when the Ravens winning, we still be getting a good amount of questions. But oh, when they lose, whoo, 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 my email flooded every single time uh in today's video we're going to get to questions from our team keep it clean patrons uh if y'all would like to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraven vids if you don't want to that's fine and you want to still have your question featured uh you can send me an email at team keep it clean at gmail.com now gotta give a special shout out to the newest team keep it clean patron our guy george so george appreciate you becoming a team keep it clean patron my friend and let's get into his question he said 
Why are the Ravens so bent on getting more offensive players? Defense wins games. Our defense is so terrible. I'm sorry, but we should have made Mike McDonald the head coach and gave John Harbaugh an office job. Oh, easier said than done, my friend, because John Harbaugh, he wasn't going nowhere. John Harbaugh ain't want to retire. John Harbaugh ain't want to stop head coaching. So John Harbaugh is still the head coach. And we know with John Harbaugh, He's only going out on his own terms. I still, I know some Ravens fans say, oh, he should, but John Harbaugh will probably never get fired from the Baltimore Ravens. Never, because they're family. They're family. So with Mike McDonald, um, he, there was nothing else for him to do with the Baltimore Ravens uh, because he was already a defensive coordinator. The next highest thing is a head coach. I mean, you could add assistant head coach as a title and get a little extra money maybe, but that's it. Ain't, ain't no higher than that. And Seattle Seahawks, they needed a head coach, and boom, they end up getting him. So, yeah, Mike McDonald, thinking about him as a head coach, we think about him like, man, it would have been an easy transition. All the players already liked him. He had a really nice defense. He could have kept calling the defense, and then he could have had somebody else take off for offense. Or, yeah, Todd Munkin. So, Todd Munkin might have stayed the offensive court. Oh, man, it could have been sweet, but we knew it was never going to happen. Next question came from my guy, Devin. He said, Derrick Henry, less than 20 carries once again. Pass defense. Well, let's stick with that. It's not, in my opinion, it's not always the number of carries, but if you see Derrick Henry and he gets absent from a game and, like, Raven, like, really, like, not using him at all, especially when they have opportunities to use him because they were never down by more than a score yesterday. They were always in a game, literally through the entire game. So it wasn't like it was a situation where Derrick Henry just needed to be removed from the game completely. No, they always had opportunities. So he could have been a lot more involved in a game for sure. So this, this Ravens, Ravens, they, they could be tricky. Anyway, he also said pass defense was terrible and at least five to six interceptions dropped. You want to hear a, a, a funny stat? I, I guess it ain't so funny when you think about it. Um, this stat came from Ian Hortiz, gave a nice reminder. said the Ravens were charged with three dropped interceptions against the Browns in week eight. Was it only three? I thought it was four. Kyle Hamilton. I thought Eddie Jackson had like three. Uh, yeah, yeah, he had. Anyway, whatever. But. Said that they were charged with three drop interceptions against the Browns in week eight. Says the only other instance of a defense dropping at least three interceptions in one game was the Ravens against the Bills in week four. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. So this ain't nothing new for the Baltimore Ravens. This is what we do, baby. We drop picks. It says uh, the Ravens have eight drop interceptions on the season. No other defense has more than five. Wow. Those are some numbers for you. Anyway, he also said, my guy Devin, he said, I just don't understand how Eddie Jackson is still on the team. We knew being down Nate Wiggins and Marlon Humphrey was going to make the pass defense worse, but that doesn't justify all those missed interceptions. Will it justify that that's why he don't play wide receiver? Next question came from my guy, Derek. He said, wow, Engraven, we always talk about the Chiefs, Steelers giving the Ravens a fit, uh, but it's the Browns. Man, we only swept them once in the Lamar era, and that was in 2020. Most times we split with them. Why aren't we talking about that? Three and three in the division. We sweep Cincy and we get one win from Cleveland and we lose to Pittsburgh. It just happens. That's division football for you, baby. That's it. That's division football. And, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but these games, they could be wacky sometimes. We saw last year when the Baltimore Ravens, they beat DTR um, when he just found out like a couple hours before the game that he was going to be starting for the Browns. Ravens, we don't care about that. They beat up on him. Uh, then in that last game, Deshaun Watson, he played in the whole game, and then I think in the second half he didn't miss a single pass. And he was playing with like not a broken arm. Was it a broken collarbone? It was a broken something. And he finished the game, beat the Ravens, and then went on injury reserves. I said, really, man? Really? So it's just, it's a division game, man. With the division games, despite what the records are, this is a team that you play at least two times a season, sometimes potentially three, but you play them at least two times a year. They know you, you know them. These games, they get tricky. Next question came from my guy, Keontae. He said, I'm honestly not disappointed in the game. You're not? Now, I would say I, I'm definitely disappointed. I wasn't surprised. 
but I was definitely disappointed. But anyway, he also said, when you're given so many chances to just change the outcome and you just can't fully grasp it, it hurts. But we know those division games are the tough ones. Everybody needs to work on the jugs this week. 100 catches a day uh, till game day because drop passes and drop picks really hurt us bad. Today, we also seen Super Duper Kyle look human. Team Keep It Clean and Flock Nation. Don't bash him or be disappointed. He's good for more than what we saw today. Every player has a bad game. Uh, we need a dominant pass rush. Oh, let, let, let's start with that with Kyle Hamilton. Yeah, that Kyle Hamilton is actually um one of the defensive players that showed up the most in yesterday's game. Now, I know, I, I think, obviously, given the situation that it was, it makes Kyle Hamilton drop interception look 20 million times worse for a couple of different reasons. One, the Ravens had already dropped like 50 uh, interceptions in that game. So when they dropped that 51st one and it was him, it was like, oh, but then... It was the timing of it because had he caught that interception and, and the Ravens get a first down, then the game is over. And even if the Ravens don't get a first down, you still you, 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 you take over. Your offense gets the ball. Y'all get to run out some clock. And then worst case scenario, you punt to the Browns, but they have the ball way back uh, in their own field position. So that's why that intercept, that drop interception hurt so much. But Kyle Hamilton, he was really one of the only ones to show up in, in yesterday's game. If we're gonna be honest about it, he really was. So yeah, the drop pick it sucks. It really does. Does not make Kyle Hamilton a bad player. It really doesn't. And gotta use that same logic for somebody else. But anyway, he said um, we need a dominant pass rusher or just a disruptive guy. I thought we had it already, but without pressures, it's no way our secondary gets helped out. Do you think we will actually make that move? Yeah, Baltimore Ravens they they tend to really be uh, defense focused, um, especially when it comes to trade. Except for last year. Again, last year they, they tried to trade for Derrick Henry and they had everything lined up, but the Titans said nope at the last second. Um, but this year, I could see I could see them doing that again, like going for a, 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 an edge guy. Um, but who who would it be? Would they would it be Zadarius Smith after the, he done did? Maybe maybe that's why he did the Ray Lewis dance yesterday. Maybe because he did the Ray Lewis dance because he knew that he was on the way to Baltimore soon. Next question came from my guy Brian. He said the positive is we were probably destined to split with the Browns anyway. Okay, so look at it. We're taking a positive from it. I like that. He said the negative is we let the Browns hang almost 30 points. <laughs> so, yeah. He said Eddie Jackson is bad. We got $18.7 million going to Marcus Williams on the bench or isn't improving. If we don't make a big splash at the trade deadline, I think John and EDC have pretty much sealed a Chiefs 3P. Ooh, wow. Some powerful words right there. And John Harbaugh was actually asked about um, Marcus Williams and him being benched and like what was going on with that and I didn't even know I guess I, I hadn't seen it yesterday because I don't watch the uh, the post game uh, pressers from the Ravens because we we be doing our post game uh, reaction on Bleacher Report but Eddie Jackson said that uh, him and Ardarius Washington they found out during the week that they were going to be the starters at safety I said oh okay uh, so this, this was something that they really knew going in um I guess I maybe for injury's sake, maybe that's why they didn't just make Marcus Williams inactive because obviously that his his roster spot could have gone to somebody else, or maybe it was that um you know that that competitive edge because you know John Harbaugh don't like giving nothing away. Maybe he was like you know what if we make him inactive then they're gonna be playing us different and whatnot. Even though I mean, <laughs> it did it really matter? Um, but he also talked about um, Harbaugh said that it was a personnel decision uh, when it came to benching Marcus Williams. He said, we're kind of working through some things there. I feel very uh, confident that Marcus is going to be out there playing great football for the rest of the season. And he called it an internal type of situation. I was like, uh. He also said Marcus is a heck of a player. I have the utmost confidence in him as a player, a person, and a pro. He plays hard, practices hard. I anticipate him playing great football for us all season and very soon. So, uh, and then Harbaugh also got a little snappy. And this, was a, this came from the press conference today. Um, he said that with Marcus Williams, uh, there's a lot of things going on all the time, and a lot of it's our business. And there's some things that we choose to keep, all, keep to ourselves, and that's going to be one of them. So, something weird happening with Marcus Williams. I, I guess, look, with John Harbaugh, he be trying to get these Marcus players from NFC teams. He got Marcus Peters from the Rams. It worked out. First couple years then, oh, after Marcus Peters went off of him, on him, uh, after the, the Ravens lost to, I think it was the Bills, that was the beginning of the end. And now uh, Marcus Williams, apparently, they say, they're saying that he might have said some comments and whatnot, rub Harbaugh the, the wrong way, maybe in the doghouse right now. Who knows? I have no clue, but 
it could it be the beginning of the end? I mean, like you mentioned, the Ravens got uh, 18.7 million reasons, but this is why it, it probably won't be the end this year, at least, because Brian McFarlane, Ravens salary cap, who knows all the ins and outs about the Ravens, their money. He said the following. He said, Williams, Marcus Williams salary is now guaranteed. It's guaranteed. So he getting paid his salary no matter what. But he said, so nothing can be done this year. This offseason, if they cut him with a pre-June 1st designation, they would uh, save 5.2 mil in cap savings while carrying 13.4 mil in dead money. And he said a post June 1st release uh, would free up 12 mil in cap space, but there would be 6.7 mil in dead money in both 2025 and 2026. So, you know, it's funny during the stream, um, I was wondering what the because when I first noticed that Marcus Williams was benched, I said, oh, uh oh, is this does this mean what I think it could possibly mean? But I was wondering what the um, potential salary cap implications were. Glad we got Brian McFarlane and, and he's always willing and able to clear that stuff up for us. Uh, uh, he also said, Brian, my guy, Brian, uh, he said, love you and your channel, bud. Hope your family has a good night and hashtag team keep it clean. So he, he was like, look, man, I, I, I've been going off on these Ravens players, but let me end this off on a positive note. I appreciate that, Brian. Thank you. Next question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron. I told y'all, this, this is the episode where we feature all the questions from our Team Keep It Clean patrons. My guy Plex, he said, I've seen this show before. It's like my TV is stuck on MTV and ridiculousness is being played over and over. Oh, my goodness. You go to a hotel, that, they play that all the time. You, like you said, on MTV, they play it all the time. Um, that show is just... I, I could watch like a couple of minutes of it. Then it, I just, I, I can't watch it no more. It's like, oh, okay, this is, anyway. Um, he said, another finally coached game from Harbaugh. Was it his fault we dropped four interceptions? No. Was it his fault we failed to convert on third down many times? No. Was it his fault we ran a direct snap with Henry? No. Was it his fault that JT missed the field goal? No. Was it his fault Lamar missed Zay on a deep pass? No. Was it his fault this team was not prepared to play? Yes. All those no's came from him, by the way. I wasn't answering for it. Those all came from him. Those were all in his question. Uh, he said, and that is the problem. This team is its own biggest threat. Uh, I could smell the L coming. A road game against a 1-6 division opponent that's playing his third string quarterback. It is what it is at this point. We weren't meant to win this game. We didn't make any play. Uh, we needed to come away with the win. It'd be like that sometimes. Kyle dropping that interception sealed the L. When he dropped it, I knew it wasn't meant to be. He was the only one that showed up defensively, so I'm not mad at him at all. See, that's what I was talking about earlier. Kyle Hamilton, he came, he came to play yesterday. He really did. Uh, anyway, he said, um, did Roke, oh, he said, pass rush was non-existent. That's been a theme with the Ravens recently. Uh, did Roquan play? <laughs> He's a secondary, might as well have had me out there. It wouldn't have been any worse. Marcus Williams should demand the trade. It's not him, uh, and this game was proof of that. Eddie Jackson is horrible. I know if Marcus was in the situations Eddie was in today, he at minimum makes one play. Uh, Jameis put Eddie in a fish fry. Oh, that, that sounds really good, by the way. Anyway, uh, he says, Zach Orr and whoever the DB coach is, got to go. I gave Zach half the season, and there's been no improvement. We've, got, we've gotten cooked against seven of the eight QBs we faced. Uh, the middle of the field is always open. It is. Uh, DBs refuse to turn their head around. It doesn't matter who we've had in or out. The results have been the same every week. I don't know what's the point of bringing in Dean Pease or what the point of bringing him in was when he retired in 2017 before getting fired and took a job a month later in Tennessee. You brought in someone who was struggling before he left to help someone who is struggling now. And it looks like the Spider-Man meme. He said, I, I knew we weren't going to go the rest of the season without a loss, but I hope we wouldn't have the same type of loss that we've been suffering from for the past umpteen years. Mm. That's real. There is literally... What, what can I re even respond to that? What, 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 what can I say to that? What, what, what am I, yeah, because it's true. He said everything. It's been the same thing for years. Ravens could look like this powerful, all-world dominant team. Oh, man, this, they could be the best team in the league. Then they go out and do stuff like this. And, again, it's sad because it's not surprising. And it's expected that they do stuff like this because they always do stuff like this. He also said, furthermore, all special teams are terrible. Can't kick, can't punt, can't return kicks, can't recover onside kicks. Isn't our head coach a specialist in this department? If he can't get that unit to run properly, what good is he? Chris Collier doesn't need to... <laughs> he said Chris Collier doesn't need to return anything. Get someone back there with some speed and shiftiness. Now, I was saying about Chris Collier that I feel like they got him back there because he's safe. Because he obviously don't fumble the ball. And he be getting hit. He be taking some hits back there. But he don't fumble the ball. 
So that's a good thing. But I feel like he doesn't give you the best potential opportunity for a good kick return. But I think they just got him back there because he's safe. But is playing it safe worth it? Gotta ask John Harbaugh. I owe Ravens fans an apology. Next question came from my guy, Morton. He said, I owe Ravens fans an apology. I said I liked our guys in the wide receiver room. Hey, I, I told you, I, I know that you really are John Harbaugh. You ain't nothing but a John Harbaugh burner. So I appreciate you being a patron, John Harbaugh. Thank you. And I, I be telling the team, keep it clean, that I know y'all Ravens be watching this stuff. Y'all be watching their comments. Y'all be watching their live, their live streams and be seeing everything that team keep it clean got to say. I already know. So you ain't, ain't got to tell me, man. So John Harbaugh, I know it's you. Listen up to see what my guy Martin had to, well, my guy John Harbaugh had to say. He said, uh, I owe Ravens fans an apology. I said I liked our guys in the wide receiver room, the Nelson uh, and Bateman. He said, then Nelson and Bateman do this. My apologies, guys, but I still think we need to improve in the secondary somehow. He said, hey, man, how can just about every quarterback have their best game against us? QB and wide receiver look at the schedule, and they jump up and down with excitement like it's Christmas. They know they're about to have a huge day, especially on third down. Guys are going uh, to be wi as wide open as you have ever seen. Uh, while Eddie Jackson wasn't better, I like that the Ravens benched Marcus Williams to send a message that they aren't playing around and guys need to step up. Just because you're getting paid don't mean you get a pass. And yeah, I was surprised that they benched Marcus Williams uh, and because of that right there with what you just said. Just because, just because guys are getting paid doesn't mean they get a pass. I was surprised. I was surprised you did that, John Harbaugh, because I know I'm reading an email from you, John Harbaugh, but I'm going to keep reading your email, John Harbaugh. Martin, that's, that's, that's your fake alias, John. Oh, that's okay. Anyway, he said, I know you said you're not excusing Zach Orr because Marlon and Nate were, uh, but was willing to give a pass because of that, and I would agree with you, except that weeks one through seven were the exact same thing. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, I was, I, I said with Zach Orr, I know a lot, of, a lot of Ravens fans would not want to hear it, but I would give him a pass for that game only. For the, this past game against the Browns, I would give him a pass for that only because he was missing Marlon Humphrey. Uh, he was missing Nate Wiggins. Michael Pierce left with injury. Travis Jones is still hurt. Uh, Brent Urban, he left with injury. So you're dealing with some of that stuff. But, yeah, overall, there ain't no excuses. Overall. But anyway, continuing, he said, uh, like, I don't understand why on third and fourth down, the defense can stop. Any they can't stop anything. Uh, the only way for this defense to get a stop is they got to go for a turnover every drive. Shaking my head. I don't know, man. I don't think anything is going to fix this defense. Zach Orr isn't going anywhere. And even if the Ravens trade for someone that might not fix anything, all I can do is root for the guys out there and hope that they figure it out somehow. Yeah, somehow. Uh, they be uh, Ravens, they, they like to play far back in those critical situations. Like third and short, you'll see the, the cornerback playing way back, way back. And it's like, what what is going on? Even though, like, you, you saw it throughout really the whole game yesterday. Uh, when it was third down, it was like, oh, boy, here we go. And Ravens, this has been an all-year thing for the most part. It'll be first down, yeah, let's go, Ravens. Second down, yeah, let's go, Ravens. Third down, it's like, uh-oh. That same confidence is not really there all the time on defense. It, it certainly isn't. Because it's just been repeat issue after issue after issue. after It's been the same thing. So how can it get fixed? I don't even know at this point. These next questions came from my guy, Jarvo. He says, so here are some reasons we are destined to go and possibly win the Super Bowl. Now, he, <laughs> it's, it's October 28th. He sent this on October 26th. Well, we got some other questions from him that came after the game. So let's get into this first. He said, what is our QB's first name? It's Lamar. He said, what is King Henry's middle name? It's Lamar. Uh, he said, who's performing in the Super Bowl this year? It's Kendrick Lamar. Uh, he said, Ravens had been to and won the Super Bowl every 12 years since our first one. That's true. He says, this is Super Bowl 59 right now, and Lamar will be 28 next year, and the King will be 31 next year. And what's 28 plus 31? Ooh, I like that. I like that. So, hey. <laughs> He said, and number six, we won our last Super Bowl where? It was in New Orleans. And he says, some facts I saw some Ravens fans post up that I thought were very, very interesting. Hey, and we hope that it ends up going just like that. Now, you see, that was his question before the game yesterday. Listen to his question after. Defense lacks that fire and passion. Nobody on our defense can catch a football. <laughs> <You're so jolly. laughs> He wasn't so happy then. Uh, he also said, uh, Eddie Jackson, he sent this um, screenshot from uh, Jeff's Rebic reporting. Uh, Eddie, safety, safety Eddie Jackson said reportedly that Ravens are in a funk 
took responsibility for his role in it as far as the missed interceptions and the winning touchdown. Kyle Hamilton and Roquan Smith were gone from the locker room before the media was in, but the defense didn't think communication was an issue. Other things were. That, um, that right there, I did see that yesterday. That Kyle Hamilton and Roquan Smith, they just cleared it. They said, nope, we out. Not talking to the media, nope. So, and that's tricky because you can look at it in two different ways, in my opinion. You can look at it like, oh, man, these are supposed to be our leaders. Why aren't they talking to the media? They need to speak up. Don't run from these questions. And I get that. Or you could look at it like, man, they were just disgusted with themselves. They were heated. They were upset. They were mad. They were furious. And they didn't want to talk to nobody. And maybe they were actually saving the, um, the reporters from, from them lashing out on them and taking it out on them when they would just be asking questions. So you could look at it like that, too. And, and that, that would be their passion just for the game just coming through. So it all just depends on what side you look at it from. He also said, Super Bowl contending teams always seem to make moves to make their teams even better. Look at the Bills, the Chiefs, the Eagles, and even the Jets, how they, uh, he said, uh, who are no longer contenders. But yet we stay put thinking our team is just fine as is. I'm pretty sure the Lions will make moves even though they average in 40 points a game. But all we're going to hear is the Ravens made a call or came close to getting this player. Give our offense more threats. And even though or is horrible, get them some defensive playmakers on the outside and safety who can catch and cause turnovers. Or isn't responsible for those 100 missed catches on Sunday and I'm not even mad at Kyle for his drop pass because he does so much for us we should have played Marcus Williams and benched Eddie for Kane or Braid see I, I wouldn't be mad at that at all if I'm um, like earlier this season there were some fans saying that earlier this season but I was like no you you can't do that like you got Eddie Jacks hope that he turns it around hope Marcus Williams turn around hope that secondary you can't bench them or even just Eddie Jack for an uh, undrafted rookie free agent or a six or seven round pick at, at safety you can't do that but now I ain't opposed to it at all.